Today I will be painting some spooky skeletons the Sepulchre Guard from the Warhammer Underworld starter set. A couple of videos ago I painted my first Underworld's warband on the channel Skebix Plague Pack. These cute little critters were super fun to paint and I was very happy with how they came out. If you haven't seen the video yet, check it out, the link should appear in the corner. But those little buggers sent me down a deep Underworld's rabbit hole and now I have a bunch of warbands ready to be painted. If you want to see any particular band painted out of this bunch, please let me know in the comments. I will probably paint them all up at some point, but you can help me decide where to start. After picking up so many individual warbands, I thought that I should own at least the starter pack for the game. Who knows, one day I might even convince my wife to play with me. But considering my track record, it's more likely that I will just paint them and enjoy looking at them in my display case. For the Stormcast Eternals in the box I have some really crazy paint metal in mind so I wanted to start with our slightly underfed friends first. Hey guys I'm Zoltan and you're watching Fallon's Miniatures. The idea was to go for something fun but achievable so I wanted these guys to be high contrast, a little bit dark but I also wanted to have a blue gloomy light coming up from the ground. Well, this was the fun part. The easily achievable part is that I wanted to go for a style that doesn't require me to be super precise or to use perfect glazes or blending, but still looks super cool in the end, or so I hope. I have painted some skeletons before from the Curse City set and back then I was quite happy with the scheme I used there, so I decided to go with something similar, but to up the contrast and add the gloomy light to make it even cooler. Since I tried out quite a few new things in this project, I did a couple of things that turned out to be useless or wrong as well, but you can learn from my mistakes along the way. First, I sprayed all of the models in dark sea blue, thinking that I will keep it in the shadows. As you will see later, this didn't really help all that much, so feel free to simply prime the models black with a rattle can. Next, I sprayed them from the top to create a zenithal highlight. I used an airbrush, but you can also do this with a spray can. This was needed since I wanted to use contrast paints for some of the elements later, but I tried to go easier on the highlights than usual since I wanted to go for a dark and moody atmosphere. Now that I had my models primed and ready, it was time to base coat everything and create the basis for the gloomy light coming from the ground. I started with the bones first for no particular reason other than that it felt kinda right to paint the actual dudes first. I used green brown from AK Interactive for my base color. I found this color to be perfect when I wanted the end result to look like aged old bone. The original Games Workshop art is a bit too white and bleached for my taste. I'll make it look bleached in some places, but mostly I wanted them to look like they spent some time in the ground before crawling out to help the living into their early graves. The trick here is to concentrate only on the parts of the bones that are facing up. Anything that was facing towards the ground I left unpainted. Now it was time to lay the foundation of the creepy blue light emanating from the ground. I took dark sea blue and painted the ground on the basis with it, simply overbrushing the color over the original primer. Then I base coated everything that was facing the ground. It doesn't matter what the actual color will be later on, if it's facing down it gets a coat of dark sea blue. Usually we imagine that there is a light source from above the model and we highlight all the raised parts. Now I was doing the reverse, imagining that the light is coming from the ground. This sounds more complicated than it actually was though. You don't have to be perfect or precise with this. For the effect I was going for here, you just have to get it somewhat right. Once I was relatively happy with my gloomy underpainting, I moved on to the red. This will be one of our main colors of the scheme and it needs to be nice and vibrant to contrast with the bluish glow. Here I made another mistake. I wanted to use a contrast paint for the vibrancy, but instead of my tried and true Blood Angels Red, I tried out Plasma Red from Vallejo Express Colors. The problem was that this paint behaved a bit differently from what I expected. At first I was frustrated with the paint, but then I realized that I am simply not using it for what it is good for. This seems to flow much more proactively into the deeper areas and away from the raised parts, which is awesome if you want to use it as an actual contrast paint and not like an ink, the way I was trying to use it here. Ultimately Blood Angels Red would have been better here, but if you never try new things you never learn, and I learned some valuable lessons here about Valeo Express Color that I will later use even in this video. Once I was more or less happy with my reds, I base coated the rest of the elements that were still unpainted, but I returned to Citadel Contrast for now since I didn't want more problems. The most important thing in this scheme other than the reds were the metallics, and I decided to go for non-metallic metal this time because that really allows me to push the value contrast on these models, which was the original goal. But don't run for the hills just yet, the kind of non-metallic that I'm going to be using here is really easy to do, and if you can do the bones and the reds, then you will definitely be able to do these as well. I wanted most of the weapons to be bronze, since just like the reds, the orange color will be contrasting nicely with the blue glow effect. For this I used my tried and true Griffhound orange contrast. For all the things I wanted to be steel in the end, I used Basilicanum grey. 
The first, unsurprisingly, got a coat of Gorgron the fur. I used the Garrus dunes for the leather bits, but if I had to do it again, I would either base coat them with normal acrylics or use a darker brown contrast. The Zenithal was not strong enough and the Garrus dunes doesn't cover the more or less black elements very well, but we will chalk this up to the dark moodiness of the models. Once everything was base coated, I realized that the models are not dark enough and especially they lack some dark in the shadows because I did the unnecessary step of spraying them dark sea blue in the beginning. It was time to use what I learned from using the Vallejo Red contrast earlier. The Vallejo Express line has a black called Black Lotus, which is not really a black, more like a very dark moody blue, which is perfect for our purposes and we already know it will run into the deep areas like a vampire from the sun, so let's use that to our advantage. I mixed it quite liberally with Express Color Medium, but it works with water as well, and then I simply painted it all over the models except on the most raised elements of the reds and the oranges. This darkened the deeper shadows and gave the whole model a slightly bluish dark tone that is perfect for what I wanted to achieve. I wanted to keep the highlighting as simple as possible, so instead of using two, three different highlight colors for every element, I just used one and mixed in ice yellow to make it lighter. The bones got a bit darker due to the wash, so first I used the original green-brown to bring them back. I covered a slightly smaller surface than what I covered with the original layer of green-brown. Then I gradually mixed in ice yellow and used that to highlight further, covering a smaller and smaller area, concentrating in the most raised parts and the middle of the bones as much as possible. In the end I painted with mostly ice yellow with only a bit of green brown in the mix. Normally you wouldn't care too much about the shadows at this point, you would simply leave them dark, but now I needed to represent the bluish light hitting the models from below, so I needed to highlight them almost like any other highlighted surface. With the original color I re-established some of the highlights that I lost to do to the wash, and I used the opportunity to add some more blue in some places where it got obscured by the contrast paint, like at the underside of the captain's cloak for example, plus I also added it in a couple of places where I forgot originally. Then I started mixing in the ice yellow into the dark sea blue just like with the bone color, adding more and more highlights but on a smaller and smaller surface and especially on the downward facing edges. I paid attention to not mix in too much ice yellow though, unlike with the bone color I wanted to stick to mostly the dark sea blue, I wanted the lights coming from below to be less bright than the ones on top. For highlighting the reds, I use the red from Chimera Color since it is the most vibrant red I own, but if you don't have this color, Mephiston Red from Citadel is a good substitute. I wasn't very happy with the coverage of the red contrast I used, so I ended up mostly repainting all the raised surfaces with this red. I used it in a kinda scratchy, uneven way since this cloth is supposed to be worn and tattered. And then you probably already know the drill, I started adding in ice yellow, but only in very small amounts since the white in the ice yellow will make the red turn pink, which is not ideal. I used this to scratch the surface on the large smooth areas and highlighted the edges and the folds. Then I used a thin down glaze of the original reds to tie it together and make it blend and integrate better. I wanted the bronze elements to be just as prominent and vivid as the reds to contrast with the blue lights, so I used my favorite bronze recipe. 
The original Griffhound Orange already marked most of our highlighted areas where the zenithal highlight was hitting the surfaces and the edges, so I mostly operated within those boundaries. I used Kalahari Orange from Scale 75 to create the first highlights within the Griffhound Orange. I used multiple layers since this doesn't have a good coverage, but I wanted the colors to really pop. Then I used Mars Orange for the next highlight within the previous color and I made sure to hit all the edges as well relatively thinly. However, it is worth pointing out that I didn't really care too much if the highlights were not perfect or not thin enough. For the style I was going for, it is enough if you do something like a sketch and you don't have to be super smooth or thin. Once done, I switched to my favorite color, Ice Yellow again, and repeated the previous step, but on an even smaller surface, mostly on the most prominent edges and places where the light would hit. This time, I was kind of trying for thinner edge highlights as well. For all the steel elements, I already had the highlights marked out for me by the Zenithal and the Basilicanum Grey contrast. So I followed the same process as with the bronze, but using different colors, of course. For the first highlight, I used Graphite. Then I switched to Silver Grey. Finally, I used another round of watered-down black lotus wash to integrate it a bit since there was a bigger jump than I liked between the silver grey and the rest. Before I called the metals finished, I used a bit of AK Interactive blue green and dropped it into some of the deeper recesses of the bronze weapons and shields so that was on board the green. In some places I added a second pass as well, brightened up the dice here. And for some of the steel parts, I wanted to make them rusty, so I used Kalahari and Mars oranges already on my wet palette to create some rust effects the same way I did with the World Degree. With that, I was done with most of the bigger elements, so I turned to some of the smaller things and effects. I used a bit of mahogany to highlight the wood. I only did a single highlight in most places since the wood is not really a prominent element in this scheme. Same with the leather. I used British khaki to highlight the upper facing edges and add a couple of scratches here and there so that it stands out a bit from the bones around it. I also highlighted the fur on the models that had it with light brown, simply overbrushing it on the most raised tufts. Finally, I felt that I needed one more thing to make the models even more spooky, so I added a green glow coming from their eyes in the eye sockets. First, I painted Chimera colors green all around the eye socket. Then I painted the bottom edge of the socket white. Finally, I covered the white with a couple of layers of green fluorescent paint so the eyes appear to be glowing. And with that, I called them finished and the end result looks like this. To be honest, I'm pretty happy with the end result and I think my skeletons look appropriately spooky and I also learned a lot about environmental lights and contrast along the way. Thank you so much for watching, I hope you guys enjoyed it and found it useful. If you did, please consider giving it a like and subscribe to the channel, it really helps me out. See you in the next one.